Hi, this is Mr. Evans. This video uh, is going to look at what lessons we can learn from the 2017 uh, exam papers. Uh, I can't use the 2018 paper because it's currently protected under copyright, but um, hopefully we'll be able to draw some lessons from the 2017 paper. We're particularly going to look in this video at section B, which comes after you've answered the 15 multiple choice questions in paper one. And there are some calculation questions in section B. So uh, in both 2017 and 2018, there were two calculation questions. Um, really important that you bring a calculator into the exam and make sure it's a calculator that you know, that you're familiar with, that you can operate. Sounds silly, but if you're trying to use a calculator that you've not used before, um, then that just takes a bit of mental energy and you're not fully focused on the exam, you're trying to work out how to use the calculator. So make sure that you bring a calculator that you know how to use it. Um, and the other thing to make sure that you know is that you know all of the formulas, all of the calculations that AQA could possibly ask you. Um, one thing that I regularly get asked by students is to give them a copy of all of the formulas that uh, AQA might use. Um, now. I was just on the AQA website having a look. Um, first of all, you can get your hands on all of the um, uh, past papers, mark schemes up to 2017, 2018 stuff is, is protected at the moment. I don't know if they'll release that shortly before the 2019 exam series. Um, but when you go to teaching resources, there is this file here, which is um, formula and key data and in that very useful document it shows you all of the formulas uh, how to calculate them and you know it's right there for you all you need to do is learn that there's nothing on here that they can ask you if you know how to calculate all those things you should be able to do these calculations so also in section b once you've answered the two calculation questions are a series of written answers now in 2017, there was a four and a six mark question. In 2018, they changed that to three nine mark questions. And from reading the examiner's report from 2018, I would imagine that they will continue to do that. But I was telling all of my students before the 2018 exam, it would be calculations, um, you know, a couple of short questions, and then um, two nine mark questions. And it wasn't like that. So. I don't really know what they're going to do this year. Um, I would imagine it will be two calculation questions and three nine mark questions in section B, but just be prepared that it may not be like that and uh, you may have to think on your feet a little bit. So um, these, this is the first of the calculation questions from the 2017 exam. The topic being examined is investment appraisal and they give you this. And they ask you to calculate the payback of the investment fine now then you'll see that they've got a specific space where they want you to write the payback period and where they want you to show your workings okay now then just in terms of answering these questions as i mentioned bring a calculator and know the formulas once you know the formula and know what you're going to do if it's appropriate write the formula down you may get a mark just for writing the formula down the second thing is to show all of your workings in that space provided, right? Now I've examined for AQA in the past and on the calculation questions, the examiner is instructed to give you full marks if you write the correct answer, even if you haven't shown workings, okay? But I saw so many students who had gone wrong, made an error somewhere, and I often knew where that error was from looking at their answer, and I would have been able to award them, say, three marks out of four if they'd have shown their workings. But because they haven't shown their workings and they've just written um, an incorrect answer, you can give them nothing. So the examiner does want to give you marks. If you haven't got the correct answer, they will mark the workings that you've got until they can't give you any more marks. And you can get up to three marks out of four or two marks out of three in this one if you show the examiner your workings. Um, even if you put the incorrect answer. So really, really important to show your workings in that space provided. Um, also, make sure you express the number in the correct units. Is it pounds? Is it a percentage that you're doing? Is it units of output? Whatever it is, make sure that you are expressing your num the number in the correct units. Also, you know, express the number in the correct format. So, 
you know, it might be that they've given you data in millions and it's, you know, 10.2, 11.3 million. Um, if you just write uh, 11.2 with a pound sign, that's £11.20. OK, you'll get some marks, but it's not the full marks. Right. So make sure you are writing the number in the correct format. If it's millions, it's either six um, digits at the end. Or, um, you know, put an M there or something to indicate that uh, it's millions. So it might just be worth you pausing the video here and to see if you can calculate the payback um, from this. OK, so here's the mark scheme. The answer is uh, two years, four months was um, how I expressed it. Um, I've got a video for how to calculate payback. Check that out. But in the video, um, I advise you to put a cumulative cash flow for uh, column onto the table. You can see that there's no cumulative cash flow column here, but you get one mark for the correct cumulative cash flow problem or for a figure of 18,000, which you'd have got at the end. There are the workings that you've got. OK, it says you can give four marks. Uh, sorry three marks for the correct answer and then if you haven't quite got that as I said show your workings and you should pick up some marks okay the second question is here and they ask you to use that same table to calculate the net present value of the investment so just pause the video if you want to have a go at working it out and here's the answers okay it's 11,050 is the correct answer um, but it's very easy to write that down in the wrong format. Like, you know, perhaps you've got confused and thought it's a percentage or, you know, expressing it in the incorrect decimal. All right. So make sure that you're, you, you're writing it down in the correct format um, as advised and you should pick up all marks. So this is what the examiner's report said. Um, you can pause it and read it, but the highlights... Um, Make sure that you fully understand concepts from the specification. Um, basically, it seems that students got confused. Um, yeah, answered the wrong question. Um, for question 17, it appeared that some students might not have had a calculator. So make sure that you bring um, a calculator. All right, have a read of this, pause the video, have a read of that, see if you made any of those errors. These examiner's reports are really helpful for pointing out common errors. Um, so, um, again, available on the AQA website, download it and read it.